Hey guys, in this video we're covering proportional editing. Quick reminder, this lesson is from our complete intro to Blender course that we're offering for free for a limited time on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. All right, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. To begin this lesson, let's start another new file. So go up to your file menu and pick the option for new general. No need to save the file you've been working on. And in this new file, let's delete the default cube. So shift X and enter to delete it. Then let's add a sphere. So shift A, go up to mesh and let's add a UV sphere. In the previous lessons, we've been talking about different ways to work with multiple objects. And in this lesson, we're gonna continue with that theme and talk about how to transform multiple objects at the same time. So first, let's make sure we have multiple of these sphere objects to transform. Over on your number pad, press the number seven to get to a top-down view. And let's just make some duplicates. So we're not gonna make instances or an array. We're just gonna make plain duplicates of this sphere. So shift D and then move your cursor to the right and press X to lock the X direction and just move it so that it's not really overlapping just a little bit to the side and click and let go. Now we're gonna need to duplicate many of these. So rather than duplicating one at a time, here's a cool trick. You've got two now, so let's go ahead and hold down the shift key and click to select the first one along with the second one that's already selected. Then press shift D, press the letter X to lock the X direction and then move your mouse over again and click to set those down. Now you have four. Now let's go ahead and drag a selection window around all of them and then let's do it again, shift D only this time, let's move it to the other side. Press X to lock the X direction and click to set those down. I'll zoom back a bit, hold shift and the center mouse wheel to move this up a bit. And let's do this going down now. Click and drag a selection box around everything. Shift D, then press Y to lock the Y direction. Move down a bit and then click to set those down. Let's repeat again. Click and drag a selection window around everything. Shift D, press Y, move the mouse down and click to set those down. And let's do it one more time. Click and drag a selection window around everything. Shift D, move the mouse down, press Y to lock that direction. And when you find that there's a little bit of spacing there, click to set those down. Now, something I wasn't too careful about, I'll go ahead and orbit back up into 3D. You notice that I was also selecting all of these lights and even the camera a few times. So I have all this extra lights and cameras. I wasn't too worried about that because we can just go up to the outliner and we can delete anything that we don't actually need. So let's go ahead and practice doing that. Let's first click on this one camera here. So I have camera and camera 001. Now, if you didn't duplicate any lights or any cameras and you just have your original light and your original camera, you can still follow along with me and at least work on deleting those just so you're aware of how that works. But you can also watch just so you can see how you can clean things up when you duplicate some unintended items. So for me, I'm gonna delete one of my cameras. So I just right click on it and pick the option for delete. Now, if I want to delete multiple items, like I have all these extra lights, I'll click on the first one in the list and then I'll scroll down a bit and there's light 15 for me. I'll hold down the shift key and click on it and that will select everything from the first selection down to the final one. Then right click on one of those selections and pick the option for delete and I'll delete them all in one fell swoop. So now I'm left with all my spheres and just one light and one camera. Okay, so we have multiple objects here. Let's say that we wanna transform one of the objects, but then have some of the other objects be impacted by the transform at the same time. To do that, Blender has a feature called proportional editing. So let's turn it on. Just to the right of snapping 
if you hover over, this says proportional editing objects. So you can click on this to turn proportional editing on. And then let's try this. Let's click on one of the spheres near the middle to select it. Then press G for grab. Now, as you go to move it around, you might wonder, okay, I don't really know what's going on here. So notice though that as I'm moving, see this circle that's left behind? That might seem like it has something to do with the sphere, but actually try this. So you're in the middle of a move, roll your mouse wheel down and notice that this circle gets a little wider. And notice now how it seems like my movement is impacting some of the spheres nearby. Roll the mouse wheel down a lot more and now move your mouse around and notice how it's now impacting the other spheres as well that are somewhat close to that radius of that circle. You can keep rolling your mouse wheel down and it gets wider or roll your mouse wheel up and it will go back into barely impacting anything around it. And if you roll it all the way in, then it'll only impact the sphere you're working with. So try this, roll it down a bit so that it's not impacting all the spheres, but it's impacting several and press Z on your keyboard to lock the Z direction and move your sphere up and click to set it down. Then scroll your mouse wheel backward and orbit around and take a look at what's happened there. So you've proportionally edited the objects where your target object will get the full 100% impact of your edit. In this case, you moved it in the Z direction and it went 100% of how far you wanted to move it. Then these spheres just here, 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 and here were within that radius. So they got most of the impact. Let's just call it something like 90% of it. And then the next spheres, just a little bit further away, maybe they got 75% of it and so on. And there's a fall off here until you have these spheres out here, which weren't impacted at all. Now, how Blender calculates what percentage of impact those transforms have has to do with just to the right of the proportional editing icon where you enabled proportional editing, click on this and you'll see that this is the fall off. So by default, it is a smooth fall off, which means it kind of starts with a closer match. And then the graph, as you can see here, is that it will fall off in kind of a smooth, gradual way towards the end. Whereas you can just imagine each of these graphs is telling you how it will change over time. So let's try changing this, but first let's click off in space. Let's undo back a step, control Z. And you'll have to maybe undo back a few steps if you were selecting around like I was. So I'm control Z, control Z, and I'll keep doing it until these go down. There we go. Make sure you have one of those middle spheres selected. You have proportional editing turned on, but this time click on the little graph icon to the right and let's switch it to random. Now go ahead and press G for grab. Make sure that you roll your mouse wheel so that that radius is quite wide. Press Z and begin moving up and down. And I'll actually make my circle quite a bit bigger. And as I move this up, I'll click to set it down and then orbit around and you'll see random. It was sort of random. Some of the spheres that were quite close weren't impacted at all. Some of the spheres that were quite far away were impacted kind of a lot for how far away they were. So it was sort of random how all of these were impacted relative to this one here. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here. And for a limited time, we're giving you access to one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube. And this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And now, back to the lesson. Let's undo back a step. This works for all transformations. So let's switch this back to smooth. You can play around with all of the different types uh, later, but for right now, let's go ahead and press G for grab, press Z to move this up, and then click to set it down. And now let's take a look at 
scale. So press S for scale and you can scale this up or down. And notice that the ones towards the middle got a lot bigger and the ones to the outside didn't seem to grow that much at all. Now, the same would be true for rotate, but it's tougher to tell with a sphere. But go ahead and press R for rotate. And you can see that as you rotate this, the ones closer to it are being impacted. And they're rotating about the origin for this sphere. And roll your mouse wheel forward and backward to see how if you go way back, it will impact them all. And if you roll your mouse wheel forward, it'll leave some of them not impacted at all. So while you're in the middle, you can roll your mouse wheel forward and backward to see the change in how this proportional editing will work. And then click to set that down. So you can see how we started with a bunch of spheres that were pretty similar. And with just a couple of proportional edits here, we have quite an interesting 3D model going on. Now this is random and very abstract, but you could see how proportional editing could be used to create something quite interesting pretty quickly. Now, proportional editing is great when you're editing multiple objects or transforming multiple objects relative to one another in this way. But you can also proportionally edit a single object within edit mode. So let's take a look at what I mean by that. To make this simple, let's start a new file. So click on File, New, General. There's no need to save this file. Let's delete this cube, Shift X, press Enter. And then let's add a torus, Shift A, and under mesh, add a torus. And in the Adjust Last Operation panel, open the Add Torus, and let's go ahead and change the major segments up to 60. And let's change the minor segments up to 30 and hit enter. Then roll your mouse wheel forward towards this torus. So we've just made it a little more detailed. You can click on the add torus menu here to shrink it down. And then let's switch to edit mode. So press tab to switch to edit mode. And you see you have all the vertices, edges, and faces pre-selected. So click once in space to deselect everything. So during the beginning part of this lesson, we covered how to proportionally edit multiple objects, but we can use proportional editing here within edit mode to affect more than one vertex, edge, or face at the same time. So let's take a look at how that works. Let's turn on proportional editing. Okay, so the torus is deselected. You've turned on proportional editing. We need to select some amount of geometry that we do want to edit. And then the proportional editing will proportionally edit the geometry nearest to it. So let's take a look at how that will work. Press seven on your number pad to switch to a top-down view. And let's say we want to maybe adjust one side of the torus in some way. So let's click on wireframe view mode, and that's toggling on x-ray view mode for me as well. Make sure that both of those are toggled on. And then let's click and drag a selection window around a piece of this. I'm not too worried about it being precise, so just click and drag a selection window around a big old piece of the torus on this side. Then let's orbit back into 3D, and let's turn back on solid shading mode. And with that selected, let's go ahead and press G for grab, and you'll notice that as you're moving this around, the other part of the torus seems to be trying to adjust a little bit, but depending on how far you go, it can get pretty weird. But roll your mouse wheel back so that you get a wider radius here. And notice how much more gradual it is when you try to change it over here. The other stuff is actually trying to adjust itself to make it a more natural type of thing. And the more you go out, the more the whole torus is trying to adjust. So roll your mouse wheel, not all the way out. You don't want the whole torus to be completely edited. Maybe something like I have here and press Z to lock the Z direction and move this up and then click to set it down and orbit around to check out what you did there. So rather than you moving this up and it being a very harsh drop off to the rest of the stuff, that's what would happen if you use the move tool normally. When you have proportional editing turned on, you notice that the rest of it tries to make the adjustment as best it can 
so that you get a relatively smooth change here. Notice this works for other commands too. So orbit so you get a bit of a side angle view here. Press R for rotate. And notice you have that circle around. So as you're rotating here, try zooming in or rolling your mouse wheel in. And you notice the part of the torus that's trying to be proportionally edited is much smaller. If you roll the mouse wheel out or make that circle bigger, then all of a sudden it becomes more gradual. So go ahead and click to set that down. And the same is true for scale. Press S for scale and roll your mouse wheel way in and notice that the scale is much harsher. Whereas if you roll your mouse wheel out and make this quite wide, now the scale is being more gradual in the way it's adjusting itself across the whole torus. You can go ahead and click to set that down. And if you orbit around, you see that again, with just a few proportional edits of the underlying geometry, in this case, we selected a handful of faces. You could do the same with a single vertex and just see how it impacts the vertices nearby. You could do the same with a handful of edges. It will allow you to make more gradual edits. And once again, you can always experiment with clicking on the fall off here and trying out what would it look like, for example, if you switch to inverse square. Now try pressing G for grab and rolling your mouse wheel in and out. And you see that it seems like there's a bit more harshness in how this is happening. It might not always be easy to tell which one is the best method for what you're trying to do. So just a good idea to experiment a bit. Remember, proportional editing will remain on no matter what you do with your transform tools until you click to turn it off. So you just click on that icon. And now if you press G for grab, notice the difference. It will just tear this thing apart. And if you realize, nope, I actually needed proportional editing on, you can hit escape. Click on the proportional editing icon to turn it on. Switch to whatever method it is you wanted and press G for grab and now it will behave differently. Okay, so I encourage you to play around. Proportional editing is a really powerful tool, very, very useful for all sorts of things in Blender. And you always need to keep in mind, it can be useful for creating individual objects when you're here in edit mode, but it can also be useful for multiple objects, editing them relative to one another, as we did earlier in this lesson. So please spend some time experimenting, getting comfortable with it. And then when you feel good, you're ready to move on to the next lesson. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy blending.